From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, listeners, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. My name is Peter Tischer. And I'm Roger Charlton. And this is the podcast about all the difficult things you might encounter when you are learning the English language. Yes, Peter. One of those difficulties, I think, is the large number of discrepancies between the way things are written and the way they're pronounced. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is nothing new, in fact. I remember in uh, Shakespeare, we come across uh, a line, an insult it's meant to be. Uh-huh. Thou Zed, that is you, Zed. Uh-huh. Or an American would say Z. Uh-huh. Thou unnecessary letter. <laughs> <laughs> so even Shakespeare was questioning whether we really need 26 letters of the alphabet. Speaking of useless letters, there's one letter that I find even more difficult, which is the letter H. Oh, yes, that is difficult. The problem being, sometimes it's pronounced and sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's pronounced in one country and not in another? True enough. I have one example for this, actually. Yes. I think you would not say an herb. I personally would say a herb. A herb. Yes. Okay, I'd say an herb. So that's sort of a plant that you can season things with. Yeah. Spelt H-E-R-B. Yeah. And of course, this gives a difference or, or produces a difference for the article preceding it. Yeah. Because I say an herb. I don't pronounce the H. And I say a herb. Uh-huh. Although because... some people in Britain would say an herb. And that is... Um, now that's th- making it even more <laughs> difficult. People of Caribbean origin, I think, Jamaicans, for uh-huh. example, would pronounce it, let's call it the American way, <laughs> herb. Uh-huh. And why is that? Um, well, I guess um, they're interested in uh, a certain type of plant that you can smoke. Ah, uh, you mean uh, um, marijuana? Yeah. Illegal substance in uh, most illegal countries. Illegal substances, yeah, I guess. <laughs> Maybe not in their country, who knows. <laughs> so they would say an herb. Yeah. But you would still stick for the general thing, a herb. Yeah. But we all say an honest man. Yeah. In other words, we don't pronounce the H there. Mm -hmm. It's written but not pronounced. On the other hand, there will be a hotel, which everybody basically would say a hotel, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think maybe some rather conservative speakers in Britain might say an hotel. And drop the H on? That is using an, and then there's no H. Probably because they think, hey, I know French, and the French say hotel. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, it sounds kind of posh. I think that's on the way out. Actually. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. okay. There is such a phenomenon as H-dropping, isn't there? There is, indeed, and it's usually stigmatized. That is, it's not regarded as standard English or good English or correct English. Could you give an example of that? Lots of people, well, lots of people pronounce hardly any H's in their own dialect. Uh-huh. And uh, this, again, is nothing new. Uh-huh. George Bernard Shaw wrote a play called Pygmalion. Right, which, which was turned into a musical, My Fair Lady. much, much later. Yeah. And there's Eliza Doolittle, uh-huh. the main character, who is a very simple market girl. Yeah, a flower origin. girl, I yes, think. Uh-huh. that's right. And um, a phonetician, somebody who is an expert in phonetics, uh-huh. pronunciation, decides that he can train her uh-huh. to speak in such a way that she is acceptable in high society. High society or, okay. Yeah, something uh-huh. like that. And he eventually marries her. And she does the age dropping all the time. Oh, she does, yes. One of the things he trains her to say is, let me get it right, in Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire, uh. hurricanes hardly ever happen. <laughs> That's hard even for an English native, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? So we sh- she would say in Hartford, Hereford, and Ah, okay, I get it. Okay. (laughs) So that's a dialect thing. But let me give you one last example that's difficult in standard language. Sometimes you have a word or two words of the same origin where the H is pronounced in one and not pronounced in the other. It's an heir. Heir to the throne. An heir to the throne, the one who gets the throne when the king is dead. And what he will inherit is a heritage. Right. So the heritage, what you get, is pronounced with an H. The right. person who gets it, the heir, same origin, is not pronounced. That's right. Yes. My God, this is hard. One letter, folks. Just one simple letter. <laughs> and you get all that much trouble. Um, 
We won't talk about the Z. <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps we should finish with a little helpful guidance for people. Uh -huh. But on the whole, in English, the decision between saying a uh and un uh -huh. depends on pronunciation, not yes. spelling. So Ooh. you have to say a uh, university. Because it's, it's a ya. Ya sound is the first one. And as uh -huh. we've just pointed out, things like an honest man. Right, but a uh, human being, which is sort of a yeah. Yeah. sound. Uh -huh. So it all really depends on pronunciation, Okay. not on spelling. Did we confuse you folks out there? We hope not. If you're confused, go to our website, www.robecast.de, and read all about H's, pronounced or unpronounced. Goodbye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.